In part two of this series, we share on how to receive emotional healing and deliverance and take the congregation through this. A powerful time when God brings healing and deliverance, making his people whole. All right, let's stand up to our feet. We're going to make our declaration and then we're going to spend some time in God's word. So if you brought your Bible with you, lift your Bible high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold and strong together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ. And a channel of his blessing to many people. I believe his word. I receive his word. And I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus name. Amen. Last Sunday we started a series that we are calling emotional wholeness and deliverance. And uh, today is the second message. Last Sunday, we kind of talked about all the problems and we left you with problems. <laughs> uh, but today, we're going to talk about the answers to those issues. I want to quickly just review uh, just the outline of what we covered last Sunday so that we just connect back to uh, things we covered. And uh, we, we began by saying that man is a tripart being, spirit, soul, and body. All of us, spirit, soul, and body. And so we are addressing the soul in this series. We are saying that just as, uh, you know, we could have problems in the body, the soul also, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings, that realm of our, us could also be affected, could be hurt, could have pain, could have problems. And uh, so we're talking about that, and we're, we're, we're addressing on how to receive healing uh, to our soul. And we are also saying that some of the problems in the soul could be caused because of demonic activity, demonic influence, and so we need deliverance uh, in that area. We quickly mentioned some life problems that are related to problems of the soul. So if our soul, soul is hurt, how does it manifest? How does it show up? Uh, how does it affect our lives? There could be behavior uh, uh, and Problems in our behavior, in our choices. Mm, there could be uh, uh, problems in our emotional well-being. Uh, there could be relational problems. We're unable to relate to people properly. Uh, there could be problems in our life experiences. We may have, uh, you know, recurring uh, thing, things that happen, keep on happening, like losing jobs, unable to keep a job, or um, uh, sometimes it's uh, fina problems financially. Uh, and it not, may not be the, the fact that we are not making enough money. We just don't know how to manage that money and we just spend everything. But the real reason would be a problem in the soul. We, there's some sort of addiction or things that are causing us to waste our finances and so on. So we talked about these things. Um, even our physical health could be affected. Then we try to list out some of the causes of these problems. What causes these problems? Uh, just reviewing very quickly. We mentioned wrong thinking. You know, if we are thinking wrong or believing things that are wrong, that affects our soul. Uh, wrong speaking, words we speak or words other people have spoken over us, which we have uh, accepted, those wrong words can affect us. We talked about continual deep-seated sin. The Bible tells us that the flesh, fleshly lusts war against our soul. So if I'm engaging in fleshly lusts, continuing on, that is I'm actually damaging my own soul, my own mind and emotions. Uh, we talked about trauma and adverse experiences, things that sometimes we don't have control over. Those things happen in life, and they could impact us uh, emotionally as well. Uh, we talked about involvement in the occult and false religions, and uh, sometimes we may do these things. Sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, we were just brought into those situations uh, where we get involved in the in the occult and false religions. And uh, the last one we mentioned also was ancestral commitments and practices, things that may have taken place uh, in our ancestry, uh, parents, grandparents, and so on. Uh, uh, and the Bible talks about third and fourth generation of the, the iniquity of the fathers is, it impacts three, four generations uh, that, uh, that come after. And so we talked about these things, uh, that we need to address those um, 
causes. So what our objective today is now to look at the answer. What is the solution? How does God bring healing, uh, uh, deliverance, and wholeness into our lives? And uh, what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm dividing this message in two parts. One is I'm going to talk about the basis very quickly. I'm going to talk about the basis on which we can receive emotional healing and wholeness. And then we are going to, I'm going to share with you uh, what we need to do to receive healing and wholeness. I'm going to walk you through that. And then we're going to keep aside a major part of our time today to actually pray and receive uh, healing and deliverance for us. You with me? So we're going to do that right here. Uh, and so we'll keep aside time aside to do that as a, uh, as a gathering here this morning. So we begin, first of all, by recognizing that God restores our soul. Psalm 23 and verse 3 says, He restores my soul. So God is the healer. He's the restorer of our soul. So sure, I may have been hurt. I may have been affected emotionally. But I can go to God so that He can restore my soul. He can. He will do it. The word restore has a twofold meaning there in the Hebrew. One, of course, is to turn back, to bring back. He turns our soul back towards Him. But also means to repair what has been damaged, to bring back into proper wholeness or well-being. So God is a restorer of our soul. He brings us back to Him. He also makes us whole in our soul. Now, I want to mention here that the restoration of our soul involves healing, deliverance, and journeying into wholeness. Three parts. Healing. Because we have wounds, hurts that need to be healed. Deliverance. Because some of the problems can have demonic influence on it. There could be evil spirits behind those things. And so you need to get rid of that. So there's need for deliverance. And we also need to journey into wholeness. Meaning, it doesn't end by you and me just praying the prayer today. There's got to be an ongoing journey. Meaning, you and I need to maintain some right practices so that we can journey into wholeness and stay whole emotionally. For example, simple example, after we pray today, great, you don't go back and read junk. <laughs> right? Don't go back and watch filth. Because that's going to unnecessarily, you're going to throw stuff into your mind that's going to harm you, hurt you. So it's not enough to do what we're going to do today, which is healing and deliverance. There's also going to need for a continuing journey to wholeness. That means you've got to guard what you put into your minds. Okay, that is also important. We must journey on. And so we're going to talk about those things in the weeks to come. So today... As we get started, I want to talk about the basis for our healing. On what basis can you and I receive wholeness and healing in our lives? I want to quickly mention these five things, and most of us will be familiar with it, so I'm not delving deep into each one, just mentioning, just come as a reminder, so that when we pray, you're confident uh, as we pray together. What is the basis for our healing? These five important facts or truths. One, it's the healing and deliverance provided for us on the cross. Jesus died. Second, we are a new creation. Third, we have authority to expel evil spirits. So if there are evil spirits troubling you, affecting you, gaining some control over your life, don't have, you, don't have, you and I don't have to put up with it forever and ever. We expel. We say, get out of my life. Jesus has given us the authority to do that. You can do it for your own self. And we have, there is the anointing, the work of the Holy Spirit. And there is the power of God's word. I will quickly explain on each one of these now. So healing and deliverance provided for on the cross. The cross, the work that Jesus did on the cross, has a, uh, is the basis on which you and I receive healing and wholeness in our lives. It brings us complete wholeness. It has brought us out of darkness into His marvelous light. It has brought us out from curse into a blessing, into the blessing of God. It is a place of Satan's defeat and our victory. So the cross is a place for our complete wholeness. Isaiah 53 and verse 5, the prophet Isaiah said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That means he suffered for us. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. 
Now think about that. The punishment for our peace, to bring us peace, was upon him. So the punishment he bore brought us peace. Now, the English word is peace, but the Hebrew word there is shalom. And the word shalom is a very big word. It is an all-inclusive word. And in, in English, it is best described as total, complete well-being. That is shalom. It's not just tranquility of mind, where your mind is at ease, which generally is what the word peace means in English. But the word shalom is total well-being. It includes health, prosperity, uh, just everything in your life going well. Wholeness in every area. That is shalom. And so the punishment to bring us shalom is upon him. So his punishment provides us with shalom, complete wholeness. And by his wounds, we are healed, Rafa, made whole. We are brought out of darkness into light. So darkness has no more claim over you. That means the devil, his demons, they have no right over you as a believer. We've been taken out of darkness. Colossians 1.13 says we are translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. So you are in his kingdom. Darkness has no more legal right over your life. That's why you can expect to get rid of those things from your life. We are moved from curse to blessing. So our inability to keep the law only resulted in the curse of the law being on us. And we cannot keep the law. But Jesus died on the cross, Galatians 3, 13, 14, to bring us out of that curse into a place of blessing. So right now, as a believer, you are in a place of blessing. The cross, what Jesus did for, the, for us on the cross, has made that possible. The cross is also a place of Satan's defeat. On the cross, Jesus triumphed over those principalities and powers, uh, Colossians 2, 15. And he destroyed, he disarmed them. He rendered them powerless. Now, he didn't have to do it for himself, but he did it for you and me. And that's why Isaiah 53 and verse 12 says, He will divide the spoil with the strong. I mean, he fought, he won it, he takes the spoil, the victories, and he shares it with us. He divides the spoil with the strong. So you and I walk in the victory that Christ has gained for us through the cross. The new creation life. So the second basis for us is the fact that you are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17, I'm, I'm going through this very quickly because... Most of this is familiar. I'm just reminding us so that we know uh, we, have, uh, we are confident when we pray a, a little later. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that we are new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And all things are from God. So that means things of the past have no more right over your life. Because you're a new creation. You can disconnect those things and say, no, you're not going to hold on to me. I'm a new creation, especially in the realm of our soul. You break those things. We have authority to expel demons, Mark 16 and verse 17. Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out devils, demons, unclean spirits. So he said, you use my name, get rid of them, expel them. So as a believer, if there are areas of your life where you, you know that, look, I don't, want to be, I don't want to be doing this, but why is it coming over and over again? Well, if you're not the one wanting to do it, but you're feeling moved or tormented, oppressed and compelled to do that, then you've got to recognize there's a demonic spirit there. And you've got to say, get out in Jesus' name. Deal with that spirit, like we said last Sunday. And don't just put up with it. Resist those evil spirits. And fourthly, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is the one who heals our emotions. And Isaiah 61 brings that out beautifully. And I'm not going to read the whole passage there. But it tells us that because the Spirit of the Lord God, verse 3 tells us, He will console those who mourn. Those who are grieving, He consoles. He brings joy for mourning. For those who are mourning, hurting emotionally, yeah, he's bringing joy. 
He brings the garment of praise in the place of heaviness, spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness is talking about depression. There's something heavy on you, putting you down. Now, what does the Holy Spirit do? He brings praise, liberates you to praise instead of being under that spirit of heaviness. And uh, he, he brings beauty for ashes. He consoles those who mourn in Zion. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The fifth one that we want to just mention here is the engrafted word. James 1.21 says, lay aside all filthiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your So that's why we spend so much time talking the word, teaching the word. Why? Because when that word gets engrafted, implanted into us, one of its effects is it's going to save our soul. Save, that word save is sozo. And again, it's a word that means wholeness, complete wholeness. The word of God makes us whole. Whole even in our soul, our emotions. That's why the word of God is so important. And that engrafted word will bring us wholeness. Now, as a believer, we are given the responsibility in Ephesians 4.27, don't give any place to the devil. See, God has done all this for you and me. Wonderful work. But now he says, I want you to take responsibility and don't give any place to the devil. See, God's done it, but now your response, it's your turn to say, devil, no place here. You give no place to the devil. So you and I must say, take, uh, put up resistance to this. Now, let's move into talking about receiving healing and deliverance. You and I are confident that God is our healer. He's made the provision. Now, how do we receive? I want to talk about two aspects here. First of all, there is the deliverance through sanctification and consecration. This is the normal way which every believer experiences deliverance. That means through your own personal life, as you're growing in your sanctification, your consecration to God, as you bring areas of your life in submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, what happens? There's healing taking place. And there is deliverance taking place in those areas. And this is an ongoing thing. As we bring those areas in submission. A simple analogy would be that, you know, if there are lots of flies and just coming in, there's, there's a lot of garbage. Obviously, it's going to attract a lot of flies and cockroaches and all of that. You can keep on chasing the flies, keep yourself busy chasing the flies, or a simple thing to do is get rid of the garbage. So, in our lives as believers, sorry for the analogy, but as you keep getting garbage out of your life, <laughs> what happens? Those flies stop coming. Those, those, those wrong things stop coming. And that's what consecration, sanctification is all about. That as we bring various areas of our lives in submission to the Lord, there's healing, there's deliverance. Those things don't keep troubling us anymore. We get free. Amen? So that's one way. And that must be an ongoing thing in our lives. It's a journey. We keep making that. But on the other hand, there's also the important, the needed importance of putting up resistance to the devil. Where we do what we do. I'm going to lead you through that today. And you do that whenever you feel the need to. That is, you stand up, you identify what's causing the problem, and then you take resistance. You take action against those things. That's why the Bible says in 1 Peter 2, I think it says, uh, 1 Peter 1, gird up the loins of your mind. Now, you may have heard me say this before, gird up the loins. What does it mean? Like in South India, you find people walking around with long lungis. Right? That is pretty restrictive in movement. But suddenly they want to run or they want to catch a bus. They do this and they run, right? They gird up their loins. That means they take some action in order to run, I mean, do something. So the Bible is saying, gird up the loins of your mind. Do this in relation to your soul, your mind. You take some action. All right, don't just stay constrained. Take some action. And so that's what we need to do from time to time. When you find things that are oppressing your mind, your soul, for whatever reason, sometimes we make mistakes, we expose ourselves. 
and, and then we have problems affecting us. And so I need to gird up the loins of my mind. I take action against that and set myself free and clean up and keep moving forward. Uh, and so you will need to do this time and time again for yourself. So I'm going to walk us through this action part this morning. As we learn to gird up the loins of our mind, what are we going to do? There are 10 things I'm going to lead us through uh, to pray about. Now, I've just broken it down to these 10 things. I'm not saying this is some magic formula. Don't treat this as a formula. It's just the things that we find in Scripture that the Bible encourages us to do. And I've just put them down as 10 uh, action items. Is that okay? So don't go around telling people do these 10 things. Mm, that's not the point. I mean, it is just to help us and uh, to give us some sort of a guideline how to pray. Uh, um, in the future, you may, you know, do these things again, but you may not necessarily check off step one, step two, step, you know, just, just do these things because they're in the Word anyway, and you just follow what the Word says. But just for our purposes, our, you know, communication purposes, I've broken it down like this. So first thing is, we're going to repent. So if there's wrong things I've been thinking, I want to repent of it. The wrong things I've been doing, I want to repent of that. So we're going to repent. We're going to say, God, that's wrong. I accept that that's wrong, and I want to turn away from it. Then we're going to ask God to forgive us. Lord, please forgive me. I acknowledge my wrongdoing. Now, please forgive me. Then we're going to say that we're going to affirm our faith in the completed work of the cross. That's the basis. I'm not looking to a human person. I'm not looking to the pastor. I'm looking to what Jesus did for me on the cross. So I affirm my faith in that. And number four, very important is I need to release forgiveness to people. So some of the problems I have in my soul may have been because of abuse, because of other people who may have hurt me. And there are a lot, we run into a lot of people like that. It's true. It could be your family member. It could be, uh, you know, your friend, a close friend, a trusted friend. It could be somebody in the workplace. There's so many other things that happen around us where People could have become responsible for some of the hurt that we feel. And so we need to release forgiveness. And that's really important. Jesus taught us to do that. He said, as you will receive forgiveness, the same measure you release forgiveness. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who wronged us. So we need to do that for us to experience the forgiveness from the Lord. Then we need to embrace the truth of God's word. Areas where we have problems. Say, God, I'm going to believe your word. For example, if you're always fearful then you need to embrace God's word that says God has not given you a spirit of fear. You've got to embrace that. Or if you're afraid about your future, oh, what's going to happen to my future? Will, will I be successful? No, you've got to embrace God's word. What does God's word say? He says, I know the plans I have for you. To give you a hope and a future. You know, embrace the truth of God's word, right? Uh, and so we're going to do that. And then we renounce the lies. Renounce the lies that the devil's been trying to put into your mind. Renounce the untruths, saying that, you know, you will never be a success. You're always going to be a failure. Renounce the lies of the devil. Some of us are fearful about, you know, uh, our own safety. So reject those lies and say, God is my defense. God is my protector and so on. So renounce those lies. Number seven is to close all the doors, all the entry points. And part of this would be if I've been involved in the occult, if I've been involved in worshiping, you know, false gods and false, in false religions, if I've been, you know, going to, looking through my horoscope and going to the fortune teller and, and, and dabbling in the occult in one way or another, I need to close those doors because I'm the one who opened it. And I also need to take, you know, close the doors that may have been opened through my ancestry. Sure, they did some things. They may have done it ignorantly. But that gave the devil legal right to affect the lineage from them on. And so I close the door and I say, I renounce and I cancel what they've prayed, what they've done. I cancel those things. So we need to close the doors. And then we expel evil spirits. So if there are areas in your life where you find that, you know, the problem that I'm facing is actually because of unclean spirits. I need to deal with it. I need to expel those things. I need to get rid of those things out of my life. And then we consecrate ourselves to the Lord and welcome the work of the Holy Spirit. You're with me? Right? So I know I've rushed through this because I want to keep time for us to pray together. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead us in a step-by-step -step prayer through all of this. And please don't repeat it after me just like because you have to get over with the service. Don't just parrot it. Don't just repeat after me meaninglessly. Do it very personally. All right? Challenges that you face personally may be very different from the person next to you. So don't be worried about, hmm, are they, what are they saying? Let me listen. <laughs> 
It's not about them. It's between you and God. Right? You are standing before God saying, God, I need healing. Now, the beautiful thing is this. When there is release in the area of emotions, many times there's also release for physical healing. So for those of us who might be having some challenges physically, I want you to expect that as well. That as we go through this and, and, and break off you know, things that are affecting our soul, that there will be healing coming forth even in our bodies as well at this time. So I want you to expect that. So once you're done praying, I, want, I will just quickly mention some lifestyle changes and things that we need to do. And we will build on that in the coming weeks that... In the weeks to come, we'll talk about journeying into wholeness, how to stay emotionally whole. And I want to ad admit or share with you that these 10 steps, uh, I do that over and over again. I mean, I don't necessarily follow the stepwise, but I know these things, that we have to repent. We need to close doors. We need to forgive. We need to ask forgiveness. And we need to expel. So just that, I do it. Whenever I feel the need, I do it. Because I want to keep myself clean. And like the Bible says, I don't want to give the devil any foothold, right? So I don't want to give him any chance of entry into my life. And so I stay on guard, keep myself clean, and, 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 and make sure the enemy gains no access. So it's not just a one-time prayer you pray and say it's all over. It's an ongoing thing for us to gird up the loins of our mind, to stay, uh, to take action in the area of our mind and our soul. Amen? So... Let's stand up to our feet. I'm going to lead you in prayer through each of these things. We're going to go through it kind of fast because, you know, we have 10 steps, 10 points to go through. But I'm believing God that during this, this next few, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes that we are praying together collectively, that God will do things in our lives. I want you to pray meaningfully, thoughtfully uh, with each of these steps. Let's just let me just pray over you, and, and, and then we will get started. Father, in Jesus' name, I just consecrate, God, this, this time of prayer that we are going to have together. And Lord, we invite the presence, the power, and the work of the Holy Spirit in this place. That Spirit of God, that you will move powerfully bringing healing to our hurts and our wounds. And, oh God, repairing the areas of our soul that need to be made whole. And Holy Spirit, that by your presence and your power and your anointing, any demonic presence, any demonic spirit causing problems will be cast out, totally driven out, Lord. That by your presence and in the authority of Jesus' name, people will be delivered. And Thank you, oh God. And right now, devil, I take authority over you. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind every one of your unclean spirits. And I tell them that they will have to leave the people of God. That they will have to get out of this place. Get out of the lives of God's people. And we refuse to give any spirit of darkness any place in our lives in the name of Jesus. So let's pray the first one here which is to repent, which is to recognize wrong and turn away from it completely and turn to God and His ways. Let's pray this together. Lord, I confess and repent of wrong thoughts, wrong thought patterns, or wrong things. I've been believing about you, about myself, and about others. So now take a moment right now, just if there are things that you need to just Say, God, I've been thinking like this about you. I thought you were a bad God or I thought you didn't love me. I'm sorry about that. I just cancel that. I just repent of it. If any specific things, just mention it. Let's say this together. Lord, I confess and repent of wrong words. I've spoken over my own life. Now, if there have been wrong things you've been saying about yourself, just say, God, I'm sorry. I don't want to speak like that about myself anymore. Things like I've been a failure. I won't amount to anything. Whatever. Anything wrong you've been speaking about yourself. Just say, God, I'm sorry. I'm not going to speak like that about me, myself anymore. Let's say this together. Lord, I confess and repent of continual and habitual sin I've been engaged in. Now just... 
there are things that you know you're aware of in your own life. Just say, God, I'm sorry for just going back to those throne things over and over again. I know they're not good for me, God. I repent of it now in the name of Jesus. Let's say this together. Lord, I confess and repent of my involvement in the occult and false religions. The things that you're aware of. Maybe you were reading horoscopes, going to the fortune teller, or some things you did maybe even for fun. Just say, God, I'm sorry that I dabbled with those things. And now just go and ask, receive God's forgiveness. Just say, God, I thank you. The blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. He shed his blood so I could be cleansed. I receive forgiveness. Thank you, God that you forgive what I've done. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Just receive forgiveness. Know that you are forgiven. Now let's just look to the cross, the completed work of Christ on the cross. Let's say this together. Heavenly Father, I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died for me on the cross and shed his blood for me. I know I'm washed and redeemed by his blood. I know I'm made whole through the price he paid for me on the cross. I believe he suffered so that I could be healed and made whole in Jesus' name. Now I want you to pray for specific areas where you want healing. In your mind, your emotions, and include problems in your body as well. Say, Lord, heal me. These are areas I look to Jesus for healing. Make me whole in these areas, God. It could be any kind of problem. It could be disorders of the mind. It could be problems with the body. Just say, God, I've received my healing. Now we're going to release forgiveness. We're going to break this into three things. There could be unexpected experiences, traumatic experiences that you had no control over. And uh, we're going to pray for that. Then we're going to deal with unmet expectations. Maybe you expected people to do certain things for you. They failed. And then we're going to deal with personal mistakes, wrong things that you and I may have done. So let's pray this together. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I receive healing for the trauma and the adverse effects of unexpected experiences that I've gone through that have really hurt me and left me in much pain. Now mention if you have any of those kinds of experiences. that Maybe there, there was abuse. Maybe people actually did things against you. And maybe there was some tragedy, loss that has really affected you. Just mention those things. And say, Lord, I receive healing for those. Let's say this together. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I also release forgiveness to those who may have hurt me, knowingly or unknowingly. And just mention the names of people, if there are any, who may have caused that pain in your life. Just release it. Let's say this together. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I receive healing for the disappointments and rejection I felt through unmet expectations. Now, mention any of that to the Father if there are any. Where you expected maybe your family, maybe your spouse, maybe your friend, or others in your life. You expected things, they failed you. And that really disappointed you. That really hurt you. Just mention that. Let's say this to the Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I also release forgiveness to those who I have held responsible for these disappointments and rejections. I forgive them and take my eyes off them I look to you, who alone can meet all my needs and expectations. Now mention the names of those people and say, God, I, from this time, moment, I'm releasing them. 
they are not the ones who are going to meet my needs. You are. You are. You are my source. I'll say this together. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I receive healing from self-inflicted wounds, through personal mistakes, wrong choices, and wrong decisions I have made. Now mention any of that if there's any. Maybe you made some choices that really hurt you emotionally. Just say, God, I know I did this. Maybe five years ago, maybe ten years ago, and I was really hurt. I'd say this, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I forgive myself just as you've forgiven me. I believe you're bigger than my mistakes. I believe you're greater than wasted time. And you can restore time. I believe you're able to restore resources that I have wasted in Jesus' name. Now we're going to embrace the truth of God's word, which means for specific areas where you feel there have been problems in your life, I want you to tell God that you believe his word. You believe what the Bible says about those areas. Maybe you have fear about the future, and you're very fearful about your future, but today you say, God, I believe your word, that my life is in your hands, that you have a good future for me. Maybe you're fearful about people. And you say, God, I thank you. You've not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Maybe you feel rejected, but you say, God, I, I declare your word. Your word says, I am accepted in the beloved, in Jesus Christ. And maybe your feelings of inadequacy. You, you feel like, I can't do things. Oh, say, God, I believe your word. Your word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So like that, there could be different areas where you say, God, I'm choosing to believe your word. I'm embracing the truth of your word. Take a few moments to pray. Now let's renounce the lies of the devil. Things that you've been believing that uh, lies, things that, that are wrong, but you've accepted and you've believing. Now you say, I'm going to reject those lies. So you deal with specific lies, wrong things that you embraced, and you reject those lies. You renounce those lies. The lies of, that your future is doomed. You say, no, my future is secure. Lies about your own safety. No. God is my defense. God is my protector. Lies about your family, that your family will fall apart. No, my house will stand. Lies about your children, that they won't walk with the Lord. No, my children are taught by the Lord and they will serve God. Lies about your finances, that you will never make enough money. No, God makes all grace abound toward me that I will have all sufficiency in all things. So reject those lies. Reject it. Say, God, I refuse to accept these lies. I'm believing I've embraced the truth of God's word. And I'm renouncing these lies about myself. Lie that you're going to die out of some sickness and disease. No. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. God is my healer. God keeps me whole. Now, Going to take a step now to close all doors, entry points to unclean spirits that may have gained access to our lives through rituals, consecrations, dedications, prayers, offerings, vows that may that we may have done, our ancestors may have done, and that they may have been involved directly with the occult, or they may have you know done this to false gods, false religions, and, and so we're gonna cancel all of that. So say this with me in Jesus' name, I cancel. Negate and nullify all dedications, all prayers, all rituals, all sacrifices, and all vows made by me or my ancestors to false gods and goddesses. I cancel the effects of any of mine or my ancestors' involvement in the occult. And in occult practices, I declare in Jesus' name that I severe all ties towards these demonic powers. In Jesus' name, 
I renounce all associations with demonic spirits in Jesus' name. Now let me pray over you. Father, we thank you, God, that we've done the things your word has taught us. And right now, in Jesus' name, I take authority over every life here. I enforce the power of the shed blood of Jesus over every area of our lives. And I speak to every and any evil spirit that, that might be tormenting, affecting any person in their soul or in their body. I speak against spirits of uncleanness, spirits of wickedness, spirits of disobedience. I take authority of spirits of infirmity and I announce to you that you will have to go. I pine the devil and I pine these spirits and I say you will have to go in Jesus name. Now let's get rid of these. I want you to say this with me in Jesus name. I bind and expel out of my being every evil spirit, every unclean spirit. That may have gained access or entrance of any kind in Jesus' name. Now I want you to specifically cast out spirits that you know. Call them by the name, by the kind of problem they're causing you. So if there, are, there is torment in your mind, deal with that. If there is recurring depression, deal with that. Say spirit of depression or spirit of heaviness. If there is recurring confusion, deal with that. If there is recurring fear, say your spirit of fear. If there is recurring pull to do unclean things, you just a spirit of uncleanness, get out. Uh, if your eyes are always lustful, looking at women lustfully, you say unclean spirits, get out of my eyes. So whatever your problem is, you deal with the spirits that could be causing that, call them by their name. And while you're doing that, even take authority over any problem in your body, any spirit of infirmity, spirit of pain. And you can call them by the specific condition they are causing in your body. And you say, you get out of my body. Uh, you deal with that, call them by their name and you expel them in the name of Jesus, get out, get out. Father, we thank you that you said in Jesus' name, God, we will expel evil spirits. And right now, in Jesus' name, right now, in Jesus' name, I declare people here are being set free. People here are being delivered in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, let's also say this. In Jesus' name, I shut every door to these evil spirits and declare... They have no more access or entrance into my life. I am washed, cleansed, and covered by the blood of Jesus. I am redeemed. I'm purchased by the blood. I'm God's property. And the devil has no claim over me. I am free in Jesus' name. Amen. Take a few more minutes to pray. If you need to deal with things that have been recurring situations in life, like failure or loss of a job or loss of finances or continual debt, deal with demonic powers that might be causing you spirit of debt, you spirit of failure, you spirit of uh, financial loss, the devils that are causing financial loss. You deal with those things. Say, devil, you will not affect these areas of my life. Deal with those things specifically. Thank you, O oh God. We thank you. We bless you, Father. Now, we're going to consecrate ourselves to the Lord. To say this with me, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I consecrate my entire being to you. I consecrate my spirit, soul, and body completely and wholly. To you and to you alone. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is not for sin or sickness or any evil work. My soul belongs to the Lord. I consecrate my emotions, my feelings, my appetites, my passions, and my desires. To the Lord Jesus, my entire being is holy, consecrated to Jesus Christ. Now let's welcome the work of the Holy Spirit. Loving Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, I welcome you. Fill my complete being 
Fill my mind, my will, my emotions with yourself. Release me from all that's negative and not of God. Heal me from every hurt, pain and wound. Heal my memories. Cleanse my thoughts, my affections, my feelings, my desires, my emotions and passions. Empower my will to choose what is always pleasing to the Father. Work through me so that Jesus is glorified in all I say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we just thank you, God. And even as we have done this, you are at work in our lives. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. I speak healing in Jesus. I speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. That the power of the Holy Spirit has brought healing to your people. That we are healed. We are made whole. We are delivered. That every work of the devil is broken of our soul and in our bodies. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to give you a few more things which we're going to develop later on. As an ongoing lifestyle change. Just call our worship team up. Please come. One is to severe all ties. Which means, you know, get rid of the things that cause you to sin. If pornography has been a problem in your life, you know, we've prayed a wonderful prayer. We've had a great time. Go home. And if you've got trash, books, things that are, take, get rid of them. Don't keep them there. Don't let them cause you to sin again. So severe old ties, things that really need to be dealt with. You know, Jesus said, if your right eye causes you to sin, sin don't put a blinder on it. Pluck it out. Someone was like, okay, I'll just put a blinder so now and then I'll just see. <laughs> no. He said, if your right eye causes you to sin. In other words, saying, deal, amputate these things. I mean, deal with it with severity. That's how you got to deal with things that cause you to sin. So whatever it is, go get rid of it. Don't keep it there. Secondly, we need to renew our mind with the word. Continue to read the word of God. We'll talk about that. Live a godly life. Because if we go back to doing wrong things, they're only going to open up unnecessary problems for us. And develop the skills you need for a fruitful life. So, which would mean learning how to relate with people, learning how to manage money, learning how to manage your time, those kinds of things. We'll develop you know, our journey into wholeness in the, in the weeks to come. But today what we did was the prayer for healing and deliverance. Taking action. Now these things, you do it whenever you need to. You can do it yourself. If you made a mistake and suddenly opened the door, do these things. Repent. Ask forgiveness. Take action. Amen? Now let's worship the Lord a few more minutes before we close. As we worship God, just thank Him that this morning He's done something in your life. Thank Him for that. Just worship Him for it. Let's just take a few moments just to worship before we dismiss. And as we worship, just thank Him. God, I believe that this morning you've done something in my life. Some of you may have felt it. Some of you may not have felt anything. That's okay. But you thank him. He's done something for you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, to break every.
we just thank you for what has taken place here this morning God in each of our lives I thank you for the release I thank you for the deliverance I thank you for people being set free I thank you for change I thank you for wholeness coming in I thank you for bondages broken I thank you for diseases healed thank you oh God for your work in this place I pray that we will hear good reports we will hear the testimonies of what you have done for your people, God. We thank you. We will walk in victory. We will walk in freedom. We will walk in the fullness of your blessing over our lives. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. we'd like to hear your testimonies and uh, just let us know this past week that we got two powerful testimonies uh, one young man sent an email uh, to that email ID testimony uh, some, some, I know some a month and a half ago we had this time of prayer he came forward he was prayed for and then he came to the youth camp and God just set him free from all the wrong things. I, I don't know. 
the things that he was involved are just totally free and he comes from a hindu hindu background god just set him free from all the you know the addictions he was and he is totally free and so he sent that email 40 days of freedom the lord delivered him completely we had another testimony from a lady here who and uh, this happened back in april and she said she had a problem with the bipolar disorder taking medications everything for that i just heard her testimony that since that time april 23 she remembers the date i don't there was a prayer that we prayed here in church and she was delivered she stopped the medications the whole family is saying you are different things have totally changed in her life amen and so we just want to hear those testimonies and, uh, of what god is doing in the lives of people just healing them delivering them of course whenever you feel it's okay to share you share it there is no compulsion but as you share your testimonies we can share it with people and just praise God thank God for the things that he is doing amongst us amen so we're going to close and uh, we'll dismiss the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god our father and the sweet fellowship of his holy spirit continue with each of us in jesus name God bless you. Have a great Sunday afternoon. See you again. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website, apcwo.org, for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.